So I have been praying today that God would raise up prophetic unity in the body of Christ and boldness, the boldness of the Lion of Judah. As it says in God's word, the righteous are as bold as lions. And I believe that if the Lord has led you to this message today, that it is because the Holy Spirit has been stirring in your heart a desire to sow his word. My own personal process for writing a message or recording a video includes both both words that have been carefully tested over time and also a yielding to the live presence of the Holy Spirit as he would have me add to it. And because it says in the scripture that we are to eagerly desire the gifts of teaching and prophecy, I believe we should. (laughs) I believe we should. Now it says in Romans 1 that we can impart spiritual gifts to one another, especially through the laying on of hands. And so I'm praying that the Lord will impart to you a gift today if he has led you to this video and if that is the desire of your heart. It is my deepest desire to see the body of Christ go forth in power and love to share his word with those who need it so that the gospel can be advanced and the Great Commission can be established and for God to be glorified. When I share these things that I claim to be from the Lord, it is usually the culmination of sometimes years of receiving similar words and various confirmations before he delivers to me the version of what it is he would like me to share and so it's a lengthy pro- it's a lengthy process of god developing a word like this in my heart and it's a process of gathering with the body of Christ, waiting on the Lord, um, and getting confirmation and agreement from my brothers and sisters in unity with the Holy Spirit. Um, And so it's with fear and trembling always that I ever claim to have a word from the Lord. And I dragged my feet for a long time, Um, a long time because of the weight of responsibility that it carries. And I say this not to earn your trust, not to earn your trust. I'm not here to accumulate followers. I am here in obedience to the Lord and what he does with it is up to him but to encourage diligence and to just be very careful and uh, take all things to the Lord and to test all things. And to ask the Lord to help you discern the difference between a spirit of criticism and a spirit of skepticism and doubt from faith. Sometimes the word of the Lord takes years to come to pass. Um, There were prophecies in the Bible that were delayed a hundred years. Um, so I don't know what God's timeline is. I, I believe that the things in which he is revealing to me and uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ are much more imminent than that. But uh, to just just seek the Lord in all things is the bottom line, is the bottom line. And that it's okay, it's good, it's obedience to test the spirits, to just say, I'm, I'm not going to take this at face value. I'm going to wait, test it before the Lord. If somebody tells me that they are going to do that, I'm like, thumbs up. That's awesome. Don't take this for what it is. Take it to the Lord. Just take it to the Lord. I do ask that. When I first began releasing words from the Lord, 
I was I was so I would I was it was sweaty it was sweaty I was sweaty when I was writing it I was sweaty when I was publishing it and I was sweaty afterwards but when you're under the duress of God somebody who's truly hearing from the Lord um, as opposed to false prophets if we look at the pattern in Scripture when God or an angel uh, God's messengers appear to his people they fall down flat on their faces in fear it's not an ecstatic experience the fear of the Lord is real the presence of the Lord carries fear it carries fear um, but that is but it's also love it is also love because it's his mercy to come and warn his people those who he delivers these messages to aren't more special than anybody else. It's because God loves everybody equally that he anoints some people with prophetic gifts. And so don't be proud because if you reject a grace or gift from the Lord as it comes to you and you don't even bother to test it, God will ensure that you are even more deaf than you were before the word came to open your ears and eyes. I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen. And it's hard to watch. Often when I come on to deliver a word, I have maybe a two minute message if I were to just go from my notes. And then the Holy Spirit pours through me to speak sometimes for an hour. And in those instances, I'm receiving those messages for the first time as well. And so as I'm calling others to obedience, God is calling me to obedience just as much as the next person. And so I'll end often running to the secret place on my knees, asking God to help me obey the message I just delivered because hypocrisy is a very serious sin, according to the Lord. If you read the ways in which he spoke to the Pharisees who heaped a heavy burden and yoke onto the people, but yet were not willing to lift a finger themselves, um, it's frightening. And, and I mean that in a healthy fear of the Lord reverence kind of a way that compels us into more freedom and more knowledge and intimacy of him and the joy of obedience and uh, just a more full revelation of Jesus and the peace that that brings into our lives. It says in his word that those who love him obey his commandments and that his commandments are not burdensome. And so I pray to yield my mouth to the Lord, to be a vessel for his word. And I know that he is faithful to anyone who is willing. I don't stand here as an example of perfection. Far from it. Far from it. I stand here on the authority of the righteousness imputed to me by Jesus Christ based on his righteousness through faith which I have acquired for myself as a gift of grace from him who has covered my sins I, I am a sinner only called a saint through the sacrifice that redeemed me Jesus Christ so if you're looking to be used by the Lord you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to wait. You just have to be willing. If we are humble and willing, then God will take over. If we're sincere and we really do truly yearn to be used by him, that's enough. That's all that it takes. His eyes are roaming to and fro, just looking for those who have their eyes up gazing up at him in their arms in the air, saying, Choose me, Lord. Use me and send me. 
And so we should rejoice and praise Him and be grateful and not compare ourselves to one another, but rather um, just allow God to draw us and ignite in us a hunger for firsthand intimacy with Him. I want to talk a little bit about how we can yield our mouths to the Holy Spirit so that He can speak through us. My own experience lends credence to the difficulty of taming the tongue. And that's what I wanted to address today because there is so much in Scripture about the importance of bringing life from our mouths and how we cannot share our tongues with death. And the battle for me to control my words has been one of the hardest temptations for me to overcome. And I've overcome through Jesus Christ a lot of battles. I have overcome all kinds of things, um, addictions and just a variety of temptations, but no struggle has been greater than taming my tongue. It's such an important thing if we are going to share the Word of God and we want His living water to pour out of us that we discipline our speech. James 3 says, But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Once the Lord convicted me of a habit of speech, or a pattern of comments that I was making, um, whether it was complaining, I can't remember if it was if it was complaining or if it was speaking rudely to somebody, whatever it was, I don't remember, but I do remember this. The Lord gave me a very vivid, vivid mental picture to convict me of my tongue signing some kind of a contract, some kind of like an evil contract that would bring death um, into my life in some way, shape, or form. And And I had to pray. It is. It was the longest battle of my life, above any other sin or addiction that the Lord has through His grace enabled me to overcome because of Jesus. The, the battle over the tongue, the wrestling match over the tongue has been by far the greatest. And I think that is probably true for a lot of us and especially those that God is calling to speak his word because if our flesh is winning the wrestling match over the tongue, then the word of the Lord cannot go forth according to James 3. And if the enemy can tempt us into losing control of our mouths and into being careless with our words, then again, Our mouths cannot be used to speak life, to speak words that bring life. And so I begged for a long time, God, please help me. Like David said in the Psalms, in Psalm 141, David said, Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Let not my heart be drawn to what is evil, to take part in wicked deeds. 
And I remember praying that prayer over and over and over again because I just seemed to be unable to control my mouth when I was in the heat of an emotion. But God, through his mercy and the power given to us by grace through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, enabled me to overcome. And it was slow, but he did grant me the ability and discernment to be careful of the words that I speak. And I'm, this isn't like a word, faith, prosperity, gospel message. This is not what that is about at all. This is just simply learning not to sin with our tongues so that the word of life can go forth and we can yield ourselves to the spirit of God and that fruit will come from our lips. He creates the fruit that comes from our lips. And scripture tells us as well that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so our words can also reveal the festering things going on inside our hearts that we need to ask for forgiveness for and bring under the blood of Jesus so that we can be delivered and healed and transformed. And that will be reflected in our speech. And I'm not perfect at this. I still often say things that I regret saying. But by God's grace, it's less often than it used to be. And the power of the temptation to say what I feel like saying outside of the wisdom of God in my flesh has lessened over time. And so if we are praying that the Lord would make us vessels for his word, whether we're obeying what Paul says, which is to eagerly desire to prophesy um, or to share scripture, um, whatever it is, or words of encouragement. There are all kinds of gifts that come from the fruit of our lips. But whatever it is that we're asking for, it's really important. And this is something that I'm still working through myself, is that we learn to not what we learn what not to speak. We learn to not complain or criticize or speak curses. Um, profanity is something that I used to struggle with, um, that I had to ask God to help me find deliverance from. Um, but when I asked God, I said, okay, Lord, your word says, if we open our mouths wide, you will fill it. We don't need to plan in advance what it is we're going to say. It says in the word, we open our mouths wide and he will fill it. And when I prayed that, the Lord showed me that in order for him to fill my mouth with his words, I had to make sure that my mouth was not already full of words that were displeasing to him. Because God does not share. He doesn't share the throne of our hearts. And as it says in his word, both salt and fresh water cannot come from the same source. And so I had a lot of, I had a mouthful of salt, um, and some really difficult habits to break. And I could not have done it apart from the help of the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage the wrestling match over the tongue as a very worthy one. I can't emphasize how important it is if we want his living water to flow out of us. And because the Lord had called me to write and speak the enemy came hard with temptation to misspeak and the Lord had to discipline me to practice temperance and restraint and he's still teaching me he's still teaching me the difference between vain words and his word. The most personal message I've ever shared from the Lord is the first message that I posted on um, this new channel of mine. Um, 
I'm going to have to share the story about what happened to my old channel sometime. Um, but you can hear the chastening of the Lord in the message uh, in regards to the tongue and some other things. And it's a, it's a personal word that has application for a lot of brothers and sisters who are called in similar ways. And it was a vulnerable thing for me to share. And the reason that I shared it is because it's important for people to hear that those of us that sometimes share messages of chastening are also being chastened by our good father because as it says in his word he disciplines those he loves and his wise correction is like fine gold upon our ear and of all of my regrets the greatest regrets I have came from things that I have spoken and I praise the Lord for his mercy and for his forgiveness and for just the resurrection power of the blood of Jesus Christ the cross that he applies to even our biggest regrets when we come to him and repent and ask him to redeem redeem those things but when the Bible says that life and death come from the power of the tongue, it's good for us to heed it. And so if we are complaining or lying or using profane language or we're speaking criticism or negativity, then God invites us to come to him and ask for mercy and forgiveness and for the blood of Jesus to remove the salt from our mouths so that his fresh water can flow forth. And as with all things in our lives, if we want the Holy Spirit to flow, then we have to put to death our flesh. The corrosive power of our words in our lives is very real. And so I would like to lead us in prayer through the Holy Spirit to rip up any contracts that we have made with our words, with our mouths, any contracts any evil contracts that we have signed with our tongues. I believe God wants to cleanse with his blood today so that life can come forth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life-giving power of your word. And we thank you that that life-giving power abides in us when we have put our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, in his righteousness, and when we abide in him, when we abide in you. And Father, we just ask you to bring to mind, to our hearts right now, any habits of speech that we may have adapted consciously or unconsciously whether from something in our hearts that needs healing, Lord, or because we are patterning those in the world or those around us. Lord, you tell us to not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to bring conviction to our hearts right now so that we may repent and be cleansed. Just take a minute and confess to the Lord anything that he's bringing to mind.
Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over these words of death that I have spoken. I ask for your forgiveness and your mercy to wash them from me, Lord, and to pull up any weeds, any seeds that they have planted that have caused harm in our lives or harm to others. Lord, please remove any rotten fruit that has come from our lips, from the careless words of our lips. We thank you that Jesus has come to be a curse for us, to remove the curse of death off of us. And we receive by faith his finished work applied to the words of of death that we have just confessed. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that they are nullified. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your word of life. Thank you that you bring to remembrance, God, your word as we read it and study it. I pray, God, that your living water would flow out of the mouths of the listeners and that you would enable us to have discipline to wrestle our tongues into submission to Jesus Christ so that that living water can flow forth and bring life to those around us words of encouragement and truth God I pray that just as you did with the prophet Isaiah you would send your angels now to Touch a coal to the lips of the listeners who are experiencing a quickening of your Holy Spirit in their hearts to share your word, Lord, with others, with the lost, because you say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Please forgive us for our vain words. And help us to speak pleasant and kind and gracious words. Because as you say, God, they are a honeycomb sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Lord, send your people forth in the healing power of your word. Help us to have self-control. to speak life and not death. Give us discernment, God, to recognize when the enemy is tempting us to speak something from him. We completely revoke all creative power that he has gained in our lives through the temptation to speak his words through our giving into temptation to speak words that have come from him. Heal our hearts, Lord God, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we ask for healing and cleansing in our hearts, Lord. Search our hearts, see if there is any offensive way in us, and lead us in the way everlasting. Your word, O God, is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide bone from marrow, able to discern or determine the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let the sword of your word come from our mouths. Let your honey come from our mouths. Let your living water come from our mouths, God. Let us prophesy to dry bones that they may come alive. Teach us how to yield to your spirit, O God. How to yield to your precious Holy Spirit and not be calculated or controlling over the words that we may speak out of our own surmising and our own wisdom on the wisdom of our flesh. But help us to just naturally yield our mouths to your living water flowing through us Because as you say, Lord, when we are delivered up to the synagogues, 
who may persecute or accuse us. We are not to plan what we are to say in advance, but you say, open our mouths wide. Open up our mouths wide that you may fill it. So when we are delivered up to the councils or the synagogues in accusation or persecution, God, I pray that it would be you that speaks, not us, God. We have nothing worth saying apart from you. So I pray that we, when we speak, it would be you speaking. Opening blind eyes, setting captives free, pushing back the darkness with the light of your truth and your amazing word of life. Thank you, God, that you give generously to all who ask without finding fault. We thank you that we are held faultless and blameless now before you because our faith is in our, not in our own righteousness, but in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, who came into this world to set us free, that we may invite others into your salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.